So if you've been following me, you know that one of my main goals and challenges in life has been trying to figure out how to have that 10 out of 10 success in all the quadrants of your life. How to be more successful while also feeling well internally, and also really just kind of becoming the kind of person you wanna be in all the different aspects of life. But in this video, I wanna share a really interesting reflection I had this morning about why so many of us fail to reach our goals and the three-part approach that I think is really, really necessary. Hey guys, Alex Hine, author of the personal development book, Master the Day. So I've included the first link below this video is for a free journaling worksheet that'll help you figure out exactly how to get your life together and plot the next steps going forward to reinvent yourself and design your dream life. So it is the first link below this video. You can check it out. You'll also get an email every week. So first, I wanna show you the thing I was reflecting on this morning. This morning, I was just kind of reflecting and I was trying to figure out what really made the difference on the years of my life where all of my dreams came true and on the years of my life where I applied the manifesting principles hard or hustle hard and nothing happened. So check this out here. I was writing this down and I wrote down, based on all I've learned, studied and failed. Here's my current algorithm for fulfilled success that enlivens the spirit, meaning success that does not result in you feeling worse internally because you're not pushing all the time, all right? I wrote down, the first is your beliefs, which really make you believe in limitless possibilities. And this results in exponential manifesting. So the speed you reach the goal and the size of the goal you can reach. The second is your ability to trust and recognize your intuition. And you recognize it because you are drawn and intensely excited. This leads to what Paulo Coelho calls finding your personal legend. And I think of it as Dharma, like a divine purpose. And then finally, you have to change daily rituals, which is something about the way you fundamentally act on a daily basis. And these lead to habit and character change. So this is like the three-part system, the inner and the outer. Let's talk about these a little bit more because I think this was really, really enlightening when I thought of it. Reflecting on my most successful years in terms of feeling well and being outwardly productive, I noticed three main trends. And you tend to see most people on YouTube or most personal development people only focus on one of these. So the three are first, belief work. Second, dharma and personal legend. I'll leave it at that generally. And the third is really habit and character change. So when it comes to belief work, the point of belief work is that it leads to exponential manifesting, right? You could even put belief work, that category, as the manifesting content you see on the internet. I knew this girl when I was 16 who was an absolutely stunning girl any way you cut the cake. Beautiful like a model, incredibly smart, the best in her class. She conducted herself well. She was a virtuous woman and she was fun and playful. She had it all. Everyone was into this girl, but because of her family life, her dad who was a drunken police officer, he'd come home and he just was not happy and would yell at his family and would hit his wife and he just drank a lot. This girl who was an absolute one in a million, unfortunately her self image was that she was garbage because her dad, the man in her life, didn't treat her like she was somebody special. Didn't praise her for being good at sports and being smart in school and working hard and conducting herself well. Instead, pretty much everything that she heard from him was a criticism. Why aren't you doing this? You're not doing enough. Get me all this. And so her internalized self-image was one of someone who's not that desirable, despite the fact that she was brilliant and looked like a model and was sweet and fun. The girl didn't have a flaw you could find, but her self-perception was in the garbage. And so every guy that this girl ends up dating was so surprising. Just these bummy dudes, no careers, smoking cigarettes, hanging outside school, just like the degenerate archetype for this girl that any guy in school would have killed to be with. But her self-perception, her belief, was that her value was down here and everyone else was up here. And so that directly created her life. And you see this in the same way that people who tend to be at the lower end of the job spectrum almost never tend to apply for jobs that are higher paying because they think I'm worth entry level, right? We always think I'm worth entry level rather than I'm willing to work to get paid double entry level. So the first is that this idea of manifesting and belief work, all of what it is, is that we get 
what we believe. If I believe I don't deserve an amazing woman in my life, all of my behaviors will sabotage the ability to get an amazing woman. If I don't believe I'm worth six-figure income, all of my habits will betray me and they will not let me have that goal occur in my life. So the beauty of the belief work, the manifesting work, whatever you want to call it, is that you psychologically prime yourself for this one belief, which is that anything is possible at any time. So beliefs specifically influence the speed you reach your dream and the size of your dream that you reach with the same amount of work. Now, the second essential concept is that you might have heard this idea of just working hard, grinding, follow, blah, blah, blah. But there's another refined nuance where people say follow inspired or excited ideas. It's really, really fascinating when you hear the stories of some great people throughout history, whether it's Robert Frost or Emerson, Thoreau, some of these great poets and Zen masters throughout history, that they tried so hard to be successful. And then when they finally said, screw it, I'm just gonna follow what I internally feel is right and speaks to me and excites me, and then their careers exploded. You know, Robert Frost and Thoreau, I think it was Robert Frost specifically, but two of these creative types had moved to New York City because they had believed that like all these other big creatives in New York, you gotta move to New York to make your dreams happen. And guess what? Their dreams didn't happen. And it wasn't until they ended up going to the remote farm to work on their work, their dharma, their purpose, what excited them, not what they thought they should have done, that they had the most productive career, most productive output of their entire life. And so there's this idea. Paulo Coelho was interviewed by Oprah, the author of The Alchemist. And he said that you know you are betraying your personal legend when you do not feel enthusiasm and excitement about your life. I have found that some of the things I have pushed the hardest at only exploded when I was drawn to something and I trusted that intuitive feeling. It's that feeling where you date someone and there's a mutual draw and it just works. There are hiccups, there are weird, awkward moments, but it just works. That's what it feels like when you are kind of on the right track, when you're following your bliss, as Joseph Campbell says, when you're following that right track of your dharma, you're drawn, you're no longer pushing or having to fight with resistance. Now, the third part is really habit and character change. I'm not here telling you that you can visualize a book and your book will write itself. I know that because I've written multiple books and none of them were written that way. No one would tell you if you're diabetic to not change what you eat or don't exercise. You know, if you wanted to get a girlfriend or get a boyfriend, yes, do all the inner belief work, but what's gonna work? Visualizing that? or putting yourself out there more. If you wanna write a book, what's gonna work? Thinking about my book all day, praying for it, or spending one hour a day writing a thousand words a day. And if you want to take that amazing vacation, what's gonna work? Trying to manifest it or putting away $2 a day in that rainy day jar. There's no way to get around the fact that on some level, you're always gonna be doing something, most likely. There is synchronicity, there is magic in life, but if I'm willing to bet my life on what it takes to really be successful, it would be these three pieces together. It would be the belief work, which is anything is possible at any time. It would be figuring out what is my dharma or my purpose? What does my gut really say if I shut out the world? And the third would be if I had to change one fundamental habit I did every day, what would that be? And I found that following this three-part series has been the most effective way to really turn a non-material dream into a reality consistently for almost any quadrant of your life. So I hope that helps you guys. I think this is really important because most people focus on just manifesting, just hard work, or just something in between, expecting magic to happen. But I've only seen that it happens when you combine all three of these. So I hope it helps. Try it out. And again, download the free goal setting uh, journaling worksheet beneath this video. It can help you plan out exactly what to do to reach that next stage in your life. Check it out down there below. And I have two recent videos on this topic right over here.